hello students today we will discuss one more numerical of shear force and bending moment diagram of overhanging beam this is because of some students have some queries regarding some cases like cantilever beams like overhanging beams like simply supported beams so we are just uh, taking one more numerical and then after in tomorrow's lecture we will start a new chapter let us uh, discuss or summarize first of all cantilever beams students you must remember to avoid some confusion that in cantilever beams both the shear force and bending moment diagrams by our method is going negative means it is below the x axis only in cantilever beam there is no intersection in shear force diagram with the x axis or there is no interaction in bending moment diagram with the x axis so cantilever beams are comparatively very easier examples okay coming on to the case number 2 for simply supported beams in simply supported beams what happens sf diagram may be on the upper side of x axis or may be on the down side of x axis while the bending moment diagram is also same either on the upward direction or in the downward direction but what happens in the simply supported beam is that sometimes in the simply supported beam shear force diagram is cutting the x axis means cutting the axis of the beam itself at that interval we are finding the distance x from the nearest point for that particular intersection point and we know that at that intersection point the shear force is considered as zero because the point itself lying on the x axis and for that particular point bending moment is maximum while we are calculating the bending moment in the next step so this is the difference between cantilever beam and simply supported beam so in the cantilever beam never intersection occurs in sf diagram or in bm diagram that is in the 95% of the cases while in the simply supported beam intersection occurs only in the sf diagram not in the bm diagram whenever the intersection occurs at that point bending moment should be maximum in the bm diagram itself while in the overhanging beam in the overhanging beam there is an interaction maybe in the sf diagram maybe in the bm diagram if there is an intersection point in the sf diagram with the x axis then at that particular point bending moment should be maximum as it is but when the bending when in the bending moment diagram intersection occurs of the diagram with the x axis then that point is known as point of contrafaction okay that point is known as point of contrafaction at which the bending moment changes the sign from positive to negative or from negative to positive this point is known as point of contrafaction now while doing while drawing the bending moment diagram you must understand that when the beam or portion of the beam is subjected to udl then we will draw parabolic curve for the bending moment diagram now there is some confusion also in drawing the parabola 2 when bending moment diagram is above the x axis or the below the x axis then how is the shape of the parabola means outward parabola inward parabola concave parabola convex parabola so let us see this query is all such summaries in this numerical 13.14 you can see in this figure there are two loads udl also point load also or you can understand that the udl entirely on the overhanging portion of the beam the beam is overhanging from the left side of point b so there are two support reactions you can realize the support reaction at b which is rb and the support reaction at d which is rd the beam in total is 4 meter long as you can see 1 meter on a 1 meter length from the left corner there is a udl acting on the beam which is 2 kN per meter from support b at a distance of 1 meter a point load downward direction acting is 4 kN then after at a distance of 2 meter the support reaction at the last end point d is r d now what is our target our target is to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram and also to locate the point of contrafaction 
So let us calculate the support reactions first. For that, as per our usual method, we have to take the moment on the left support only. Remember this, left support only, not the extreme left point of the beam. Okay, on the left support only. So you can see the left support is point B. So starting from the opposite corner, the first reaction is RD and it is going up for so it will move like this in anti-clockwise direction. So distance travel will be totally 3 meter for RD. So RD into 3 is anti-clockwise movement. The next force is 4 which is going down so it is clockwise. So 4 into 1 is a clockwise movement. And the UDL is 2 into 1 so the load is 2 into 1 but this UDL is acting at the center only. So from this center the direction up to point B will be sorry distance up to point B will be 1 by 2. So here it is 1 by 2. And the UDL is going down and moving like this up to point B. So it is the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative. So final answer will be 3. 3 divided by 3 will give you RD is equal to 1 kN. So this is the our support reaction first. RD is equal to 1 kN. How we will get the second reaction RB? It is equal to total vertically down load minus the first reaction which we have calculated earlier. So the UDL is 2 into 1 and the point load is 4 and the upper reaction means RD is 1. So final answer will be 5 kN. Hence we are getting the two support reactions RB is equal to 5 kN which is left side and RD is equal to 1 kN only which is right side. Now let us see what happens with the SF and BM diagrams. Let us check now the diagrams. Here you can see shear force diagram and bending moment diagram as well. In the shear force diagram, the cutting happens at point B and C, which is which are itself the points on the main figure. So there are no new points which are appearing in the SF diagram. While in the BM diagram, the cutting point is P point of control picture, which is exactly new, which is not present in the main diagram. So we have to find y distance for point of contravecture but we have not to find x distance in the SF diagram as per the previous numericals. Let us see how. First of all let us check the SF diagram. You are standing at point A and going to point D. Now at point A there is no vertical load. So let us start with the zero at point A. Now next point after A is point B. So UDL between A to B is 2 into 1, 2 and it is downwards. Moreover, whenever UDL comes into the picture, the line is inclined. So 2 into 1, 2 unit line is inclined. So now you are at minus 2 negative value in the shear force diagram. At point B, 5 km reaction in the upward direction is acting. So from minus 2 to plus 5, the answer will be plus 3. So now you are at plus 3 at point B. Moving on to the next point, from B to C, there is no load. So 3 unit, the line is constant up to point C. Now at point C, 4 kN vertically downward load is acting. So from 3 to 4 down, so minus 1 is the new value. Now from C to D, next point, there is no load in between. So minus 1 value remains constant up to this point. And at point D, 1 kN load in the upward direction is acting. So 1 kN upward, so answer will be 0 at point D. You can also see this same calculation in the SF diagram also. Shear force at A is 0, shear force at B, so 0 is carry forwarded over here. And from A to B, UDL is minus 2 into 1 and the support reaction up to B is also calculated which is 5 kN upward means positive. So answer will be plus 3 kN. Now this plus 3 is carry forwarded at force C and at point C 4 kN load is acting down so 3 minus 4 will be minus 1 kN and this minus 1 is carry forwarded at point FD and here it is the printing mistake you can check it you can read it as minus 1 kN. So this is the shear force diagram and shear force calculation up to this you can get the half or 60% marks of the numerical in your exams. A bending moment diagram is quite tough. As per the rules, at the first point and at the last point, bending moment is always 0, MA and MD equal to 0. Now what is the moment at point B, MB? 
So you can see here as a point B. So left side of point B, the UDL is acting downwards, so which is 2 into 1. So minus 2 into 1 because of downward direction. Now the UDL is acting at the center. So from this center, the distance up to point B is 0.5, which is to be multiplied with the load. So final movement at point B due to this UDL will be minus 1 kilo newton into meter. Let us consider the movement at point C. Now you can look from the figure that when we are finding the movement at point C, it is easy to go from point D itself. Okay. So from point D, 1 kilo newton reaction is going up, means positive. So 1 into 2 is equal to 2 kilo newton into meter over here, which is the printing mistake again. So kilo newton into meter is the unit of movement at point C. And D at point D, the movement is 0. While joining the point, you can see the parabola how the parabola is forming. The UDL is in between A to B. So from A to B, we are drawing the parabola like this. It is inside parabola because of X axis, below the X axis. If it is above the X axis, we will draw the outside parabola like this. Now joining happens like this, parabola in the downward direction, then after straight lines because there, are, there is no UDLs. But due to this, the intersection occurs at point P. So we have to find the distance Y from point B of this point of contrafaction. Let us see how. You can see the bending moment or you can uh, now find the with the help of similar triangle also which is very easy. In the previous numericals we are finding the distance y for the point of contrafaction by taking moment at point P equal to 0. But in this case there are two vertically opposite triangles are forming. You can see this triangle and the second triangle. Now this all triangles are vertically opposite and similar. So you can take the ratios of base to height is equal to base to height. So base of this triangle is y and base or height of this triangle is minus 1. So you can take it as y upon 1 for the ratio purpose. Now for the second triangle base is 1 minus y because the total distance is 1 you can see. So 1 minus y is the base and height is 2. So 1 minus y upon 2 is the second ratio. So by cross multiplying, you will get 2y equal to 1 minus y. Or you can simplify as 3y equal to 1. So y is equal to 1 by 3, which is equal to 0.33 meter. So it is the distance of point of contrafacture from point B. Hope your all the queries has been solved in today's lecture. If there is further more any queries or any doubts in any of the cases of simply supported beam, cantilever beams or overhanging beams then you can contact me but we have to move on and we have to start the next chapter very early due to the syllabus completion criteria. So we are starting the new chapter in the next lecture. Now we have to close this chapter at here. So goodbye student. We will meet tomorrow again with the new chapter definitely. Until then, goodbye.